Right then everybody, welcome to my channel. Um, today I'm here actually to tell you what the laws are on using drones, UAV vehicles, um, things like, like the DJI Phantom and any other quadcopter. I'll tell you what the laws are in the UK and where you stand. Uh, the reasons why is I not long ago put one up of a local park in Derby. Um, it was promoting in the by the local newspaper as well and I had a lot of messages coming in telling me that I needed to have a uh, I needed to have a license that um, I had to have insurance for it that I can't fly it without this I'm not allowed to fly it there um, some people gave me their opinion on it what they assumed that their laws are um, other people asked me um, if I knew what they were um, previously to flying um, I went on to the uh, Civil Aviation Authority website and looked up everything that I needed to know. Um, so I thought I'd share it with everyone if you've not had a chance to have a look yet. All right, um, first thing, needing a license. No, you don't need a license. Um, the CAA, but at present time, there is no RPA licenses that are recognized in aviation law. So you don't actually need a license to fly a DJI Phantom. Um, or anything of the kind that's under 20 kilograms. It doesn't need to be registered, um, but they do suggest that you go on a course to learn how to fly correctly and learn the correct laws, uh, but that's not mandatory. Right, I'm actually going to put up now a little picture just here. They actually give you a checklist, so you can check the laws yourself and obviously fly responsibly. Um, so first one on there, um, on the first page, they, I've got a big sign saying you have control. Remember when you fly an unmanned aircraft or drone, the responsibility is yours. Be safe, be legal. Followed by their website, which is www.caa.co.uk forward slash UAS. And underneath that, they've got a, like a small checklist for you. It says, always remember, um, you are responsible for each flight. You are legally responsible for the safe conduct of each flight. Take time to understand the rules. Failure to comply could lead to a criminal prosecution. Underneath that, they've got before on each flight, check the drone for damage. Before on each flight, check that your unmanned aircraft is not damaged um, and that all components are working in accordance with the supplier's user manual. Underneath that, the drone must be in sight at all times. You must keep the unmanned aircraft within your sight. Underneath that, you've got, you are responsible for avoiding collisions. You are responsible for avoiding collisions with other people, objects, including aircraft. Do not fly your unmanned aircraft in any way that could endanger people or property. The next line is, you've got to keep your distance. It is illegal to fly your unmanned aircraft over a congested area, streets, towns, and cities. Also, stay well clear of airports and airfields. I'm gonna cover the actual aspects of that shortly in one of their next paragraphs. This is just a checklist at the moment. You'll keep your distance, 50 metres. Don't fly your unmanned aircraft within 50 metres of a person, vehicle, building or structure or overhead groups of people at any height. You have to consider the rights of privacy. Think about what you do with any image you obtain as breach of privacy law. Details are available from the Information Commissioner's Office. See, this isn't so much of crowds of people or other people that you can see in a distance. This is you being daft and flying it past a window or there's a... a a father there or a mother there playing with their children and you're purposely filming them that's a private moment so that would be a breach of privacy and that is all that is on the checklist um, so these are the rules that they ask you to follow these are the laws um, you've got article 166 and article 167 for an aircraft of 20 kilograms or less these are referred to as small unmanned aircraft for which requirements little straighten are covered within articles 166 and 167. Right, 166, a person shall not cause or permit any article or animal, whether or not attached to a parachute, to be dropped from a small aircraft so as to endanger persons or property. The person in charge of a small un unmanned aircraft may only fly the aircraft if responsibly satisfied that the flight can be safely made. The person in charge of a small unmanned aircraft must maintain direct unaided visual contact with the aircraft sufficient to monitor its flight path in relation to other aircraft, persons, vehicles, vessels and structures for the purpose of avoiding collisions. The person in charge of a small unmanned aircraft which has a mass of more than 7 kg excluding its fuel but including any articles installed or attached to the aircraft at the commencement of its flight must not fly such an aircraft. A. Class A, C, D or E airspaces unless the permission of the appropriate air traffic control has been obtained. So this is where you can't fly. 
within an aerodrome traffic zone during the notified hours of which the air traffic unit, if there are any, at the aerodrome unless the permission of any such air traffic control unit has been obtained. Or C, at the height of more than 400 feet. Whereas initially my first flight, I took it to 450 and I didn't realize this and I bought it straight back down, uh, as you'll see in my first video. Uh, at the height of 400 feet above the surface, unless it's flying in an airspace described in subparagraph A or B above and in accordance with the requirements for that airspace. And lastly, number five in article 166, the person in charge of a small unmanned aircraft must not fly such an aircraft for the purpose of aerial work, except in accordance with the permission granted by the CAA. Right, I'm not using this to earn money from it. I'm not earning money from YouTube. Um, I'm using music behind my videos, which generally copyrights the videos and an ad is placed to actually pay the royalties to whoever's music I'm using. Um, if you are using it for the purpose of earning money, taking photos of buildings to sell it, then you do need you do need permission. You can't just go and do this, um, and you also need insurance. So if that is something you want to do, you might want to actually check out the CAA website and see what further details you need to know and what other things that you need to do to be able to actually do this as work. Um, in the future, this is the line I will be going down, but currently at the moment I'm using it as enjoyment, it's a hobby. Um, but I will be going down that route at some point uh, when I feel that I'm ready, that I'm confident enough and competent enough to supply what my clients are wanting. Right, Article 167, Small Unmanned Surveillance Aircraft. The person in charge of a small unmanned surveillance aircraft must not fly the aircraft in any of the circumstances described in paragraph 2, except in the accordance with the permission issued by the CAA. That's what we were just on about. The circumstances referred to in paragraph 1 are you can't fly it over 150 metres of any congested area. A congested area is a town, city, somewhere where there might be lots of people, uh, where your street is, where there are plenty of houses. If it fell, it could land on a car very easily or on a building. That's classed as a congested area. Or B, over or within 150 metres of an organised open air assembly of more than 1,000 persons. Again, like at a concert or like I'm at the park now. Um, I came down and flew it for a little bit. There was probably less than 15 people around the park. Whereas if this was quite busy or lots of children, there's no way I would have taken it up there because I don't want to risk prosecution or actually hurting somebody. With 50 metres of any vessel, vehicle or structure which is not under control of the person in charge of the aircraft or subject to paragraphs three and four within 50 meters of any person. Again, like that's what I said about cars. Um, if you've got a car there and it's the only thing that's around or your neighbor's got a car there and you want to fly it, it's not a congested area, you've not got control over that car. So you legally cannot fly in that area unless you, could, unless you have control of that car and you could get in, you can move it to a safe distance, then you can fly. Right, number three, subject to paragraph four, during takeoff or landing, a small unmanned surveillance aircraft must not be flown within 30 metres of any person. Number four, paragraphs two, D and three, do not apply to the person in charge of the small unmanned surveillance aircraft or a person under control of the person in charge of the aircraft. Number five, in this article, a small unmanned surveillance aircraft means a small unmanned aircraft which is equipped to undertake any form of surveillance data acquisition. So again, a drone or anything that's fitted with a camera, something that's recorded or able to take photos. Summary. In essence, therefore, provided the aircraft has a mass of 20 kilograms or less, the current regulations state, number one, the operation must not endanger anyone or anything. Number two, the aircraft must be kept within a visual line of sight, normally taken to be within 500 meters horizontally and 400 feet vertically of its remote pilot, i.e. the person in charge of it. Operations beyond these distance must be approved by the CAA. The basic premise being for the operator to prove that he or she can do this safely. Small unmanned aircraft, irrespective of their mass, that are being used for surveillance purposes are subject, not under your control. If you wish to fly within these minima, permission is required from the CAA before operations are commenced. CAA permission is also required for all flights that are being conducted for aerial work, i.e., in very simple terms, you are getting paid to do it. Number five, the remote pilot has the responsibility for satisfying him, herself, that the flight can be conducted safely. So there we have it. Um, that is the law as it stands at the moment in the UK. Um, so basically, you don't fly near anybody. 
if you can help it. You don't start flying above any groups. You don't start flying around buildings and cars. You don't fly over a road. You find a nice open space, something that's like here, if you've got a local park. Later in the evening when everybody's gone, try it there. Or if you've got a local field, get the permission of the farmer. Go and fly it there. But if you start flying it erratically or potentially endangering somebody else, that's when you're breaking the law. So for everyone that's been messaging me and letting me know what they think the law is or their versions of the law, you're wrong. I have not flown it over anybody yet. Uh, the way I captured the video, I've cro I, in previous videos, I cropped it so it looked like the person was in the centre, hence the loss of video quality, because I couldn't just fly it directly over them. I've not flown it in a congested area, I've not flown it over traffic. Um, I flew it over a road by accident on my first run, um, but again, no one was on the road, no one was around the area. Um, I, I haven't done that again, so therefore I've not broken any laws. There are a lot of people on YouTube that do break the laws, and some of them get away with it, some of them don't, but it just seems to be now that the clamping down a lot harsher on unmanned vehicles, uh, UAVs, drones, small helicopters, planes, uh, anything that could potentially do damage to other people, because there are a lot of idiots out there that are flying them erratically, flying, flying them irresponsibly, doing damage to other people. It's those people that are spoiling it for people like us that actually want to enjoy it or even someone like myself that I'm just enjoying it for fun at the moment but I, eventually I want to do I, I would like to include this in what I do for work I'd like to tell people yeah I can photograph you in yeah I can photograph your house um, or I can also do video from above or take a photo from 400 feet in the air but anyway again it's just here um, they're the guidelines, so you can see it there. I'll put links in the description below um, so you can actually check it out for yourself. Uh, I'm not sure what the laws are in your country if you're not in the UK, so you might want to check it out. Um, just type it into Google, it'll come up. It's simple enough to find. Um, but yeah, I hope that's helped the few people that are actually looking for answers, that are actually struggling to find out what they can and what they can't do. And for all those that have made their own laws up or their own minds up, that is the law. So anyway, I hope it's all helped you out and uh, take care. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Um, and don't forget to check out my other videos.